iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 are available now on selected models of iPhone and iPad. So how do you know if your model is supported and what do you do if it's not? In this video, I'm gonna let you know. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. So if that sounds like the sort of thing you're into, consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the new iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 updates to let you know if your device is compatible and what you need to do if it's not. So let's get to the basics. iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 were released just a few weeks ago and we're already up to version 13.1.2. So the version update are moving really quickly. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, does my device support iOS 13? How do I know and what do I do if it's not? So let's jump in and give you those details and get started. So let's talk iPhones and iPods first. So if you have an iPod Touch 7th generation, the very latest version, or an iPhone SE or 6S and above, so that includes your 7, your 8, your 10s, and your new 11s, they are all going to be compatible with iOS 13. Unfortunately, if you have an iPhone 6, any iPhone 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1, you're going to be unsupported, which means you'll be stuck on the last version. This isn't a terrible thing. You're still going to be able to use iOS 12 on most of these devices or whatever the last version is that's supported, but it just means you won't be able to update to iOS 13. And we'll tell you a bit more about what that means at the end of this video. And what about your trusty iPad? Is that going to be compatible? Well, you'll need at least an iPad Air 2 like this one or above the second or the third generation of iPad Air, an iPad mini 4 or 5, the iPad version 5, which is a 2017 model or above, or any of the iPad Pros in order to run iPad OS. 13. If you're on something like an iPad Air 1 or an iPad Mini 3, you're going to be, again, stuck on the previous version, iOS 12, or the earlier version compatible with your device. Now, iOS 13 has some pretty cool features, and I've got a video linked up the top there that's going to show you all of the cool things you can do in iOS 13. But if your device only supports iOS 12 or earlier, is it time to throw it in the bin and is it completely redundant? No, it's still going to be a super useful device because iOS 12 is still good. We were using it up till a month ago. It's not completely obsolete. Your device will still be supported. You'll still be able to use a lot of the apps that you currently use. It just means that future apps and future updates to apps are not going to be available for you on the previous version. So you can continue using the apps you're using right now. Your device will continue to work as it has, but it may just mean that in the future you want to consider upgrading to something if you want to take advantage of all of those new features. And if you are a music or a video or content creator and you are looking to upgrade your iPhone or your iPad and you want my recommendations, there are two videos linked down in the description and up the top there right now, which is my recommendations for iPhones and iPads for music creation. Basically the minimum specs that you're going to want to have in a device to create music. Now that's just my recommendations. Your mileage may vary, but it'll give you a good place to start because I also have my guides over at studiolivetoday.com slash iPad and studiolivetoday.com slash iPhone, which are going to give you some additional information and help you if you are in the market for an upgrade. So finally, what do you do if you are on iOS 12 and your favorite apps are updating? So at the moment, we've got a situation with GarageBand and iMovie, two of the staple apps of iOS, that they're not compatible with iOS 12. The new versions are not compatible with iOS 12. So it means that you can continue using the previous versions. It means you won't have things like dark mode and USB file support, but you can definitely keep using those old versions. There is a warning here though. If you are trying to download them for the first time, you won't be able to. In fact, they've been removed. They've disappeared from the App Store if you're on iOS 12. What you can do though is if you've ever downloaded them before, you can jump into the App Store and go to your account and look at your previous purchases or previous downloads and re-download it from there. So as long as you're logged in with an account that has had it active before, has had those apps before, you'll be able to re-download them. Now, what if you have it? Well, there's a couple of little hacks and ways around that. You can get a friend who has downloaded them before to log into your iPhone or your iPad. You can log into a newer device with that account and download the software 
software. And what that will do is it'll let you download the last compatible version on your iOS 12 device. So that's my tips for that. If you're running into this problem, if you're on an older device and you're trying to install apps that are only available for iOS 13, there are ways by going through the app store, jumping into your account that you can actually get access to the last compatible version of some of those apps. And there you have it, everything you wanted to know about iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 compatibility. Once again, there's two more videos linked down below. If you want some more information, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, and I'll see you on the next video.